Welcome to Go on the Run. And this is the final video in which we're trying to profile a simple word count application. So if you're jumping in at this point, then you should definitely go back and look at the very first video because this would not make any sense. We started out with a simple word counting application that had an iterative solution and we were trying to process about 16 files, which has been provided in the repository for this project. And what we found is that we we're able to process those 16 files, whatever amount of data that represent, in about three seconds. Now, the iterative solution and the word content program is simply to open a file, see how many words are in there, and count it, and then do this for each file. We did some profiling once we had that iterative solution working. We consider that our baseline or control um, data point, and we want to see if we can do better either with a concurrent solution or a solution that could run in parallel. Remember, parallelism and concurrency are two different things. And what we mean by parallel is doing multiple things at the same time. When we talk about concurrency, what we mean is just simply having to deal with multiple things. Not necessarily that you're going to do them at the same time, right? And so a contrived example of this might be if you had to wash dishes, cook dinner, and sweep. Well, those are three tasks that you need to get completed, but you obviously can do all three at the same time in parallel because there's only one of you. So what you might do is wash some of the dishes, store the pot a little bit, then sweep a little bit, then come back and do one or the other and so on and so on. And eventually you, you'd get the tasks completed, all those three tasks completed, but you still had to do them serially. And that's doing things concurrently because none of the tasks interfere with each other. The nice thing about concurrency is that once you use concurrency pattern in your application, if you have multiple processors, you get a parallelism for free. All right, so for us, we wanted to see if our concurrent application can help us run our program faster. The concurrent version, if you only have one processor, should not be much different than your iterative solution. Um, because at the end of the day, you're still just opening a file, reading the contents, and adding it up. And so I don't expect that just going concurrent would make that faster in any way whatsoever. Now, it could potentially slow it down by having to deal with more objects to manage. So that's where you might see a slowdown, but we didn't really see that when we, meant to, when we went to a concurrent solution. What we saw over is if we try to update things like a map concurrently, where we had to take care of the fact that since these things can be running concurrently, that we don't change the map result in an incorrect way, we found that that result in contention, which actually slowed down our program. This is the final solution, and we're going to get rid of having to worry about safeguarding access to the map. And so here's how we're going to do it. So before I show you the code, I figure let me try and illustrate the solution because that tends to make a little bit more sense. So what I decided we'll do is have a work queue. What is in our work queue? Well, it's just the files that we need to process. So basically, this is just a channel of strings. And so we will create a work queue, sit there and populate it with the file name. So if you have a thousand files to process, you'll have a thousand items coming into this queue. We'll have a go routine, which we'll call process file, which we already written, which will simply take a work item or a file name from this queue and process it to completion, which means it sees a file as a unit of work. So it takes a file name, open the file, read the data from it, compute how many words are in that file and how many times they occur, and then close the file and then go back and get another file to work on. Why are we doing it this way? Because if we create a process file algorithm for each file, then we might end up with so many go um, process file go routine that we don't have a thousand um, cores, well then they just sit around idle and then the operating system have to try and manage them. And so it's best to just have a fixed number of workers. And so this is gonna be dictated by a 
parameter that we can pass to our program to say how many workers we want. Since each worker is picking up a file to work on as a unit, then it should put, and it's running concurrently by the way, it should produce a partial result. So it produced that in a queue. And so each item in that queue is really the partial result from a file. But since we're doing word counting, the partial result is just a map which says, this is the word that occurred in this file and how many times it occurred. Pay attention to the fact that each item in the partial result queue is a map. So what you have is a channel of maps. And this is where we break that dependency and not have to worry about these workers tripping over each other by trying to write to the same map because each worker simply produces a map of the result it got from the file it processed. Because we have partial results, we need something to sort of bring it all together. And so I call this a reducer. And it just sort of take all the partial maps and aggregate it. Now we can again profile this application and keep going to see if we can make it better. But I am happy with the result. I'm telling you that I'm happy with it. So you can suspect that it's faster. And intuition should tell you that this is faster because we saw that though we had a lot of contention on the shared map. And by the fact that we got rid of that, it should indicate that oh, we should be able to speed up things. So let's go take a look at the code. Here I am in the Visual Studio code and I'm looking at what we had for example three. And this is what we had. We copied this code and we put it in our main.go file here. And so you can see there's no change because it's the same code. And so now what we want is to look at the new implementation, which is example four. And so we'll paste that here. So let's see what has changed. And let's just simply start at this line. I'll say, let's start here. Because this is where we're populating our work queue. And as you can see, this is very simple. It simply says, get all the remaining arguments uh, that we're pushing are the file names and just send them on the queue. So since it sits here sending file names, we can we know that how oh, these other things must be go routine because otherwise so we wouldn't be able to get here and just sit sending data. So once we've sent all the files that have been provided, we should close that work queue. So there's nothing else to be done. Well, who is reading data off the work queue? Well, we said that our oh, process file, these go routines will do that. So we sit here in a for loop and we create a certain number of workers. So process file is a worker and we only create a certain number of those. And that is going to be dictated by this parameter, which we'll pass in. And so let's say we're going to do four, for example, we've created four go routines. Well, we've looked at this already. Process file is a go routine. When you call it, it spins up a go routine that simply takes the data from the work queue scans the word in it, populate it into a map and send that result out. That is our partial results. Our reducer is simply taking partial results and it's reading from that and aggregate it into this final result, which is just simply a map. And we use a weight group to know when our reducer is complete. And of course, before we start doing any work, we get the current time, we get all that going, we wait, after we send all the work that needs to be done, we wait for our workers to complete. That allows me to say that once the workers are finished, now I can close the channel for the partial result. Once we close the partial result queue, we know that our, our reducer is going to, we just have to wait for a reducer to complete. So let's go run the code. So we're doing um, profiling and word count and let's do go build all right so we have our executable and this is on one file so if we process profile it for one file see it took about 300 milliseconds this shouldn't change we've been seeing this through all our example the time it takes to process one file remains the same regardless of if you have one processor two or whatever or whatever you're doing concurrency or iterative solution the difference is when you have multiple files to process and so here we run it and we can see that it took about one second, which is the fastest we have seen so far. And we can look at the profiling result, but consider this is faster than what we've seen. I'm happy with this. Okay. 
um, if we go back and build the previous example, so let's go back to example three, and I'll just copy all of that code and I'll go here, paste it, and then I'll go build and then just rerun that to make sure it's so always comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges. As you can see, it's already taken more than one second. And that's because of that contention with the map. And so that was seven point something seconds. And just for kicks and giggles, let's go back to example two. And let's copy that and paste it. And let's go build that and see how fast that was and so build and let's rerun that and three point something seconds okay and the final or first example the iterative solution copy that paste it and let's build that run it okay well we didn't have a parameter Okay, and you can see it took about three point something seconds. So um, this is sort of what we profile already and went through. And so our final solution is the fastest. I'm happy with that. I don't need to do any more profiling. But if, for example, you're doing this at work and you're asked to make it even faster, well, then you now know how to use the Go Profiler, which is what I want to show you how to do that to make intelligent de decision about what you change and why you change it. And there we go, our fastest solution, one point, about one second. Um, the one thing I forgot to try is, let's don't run the profiler, but let's change the number of um, workers we're testing with. So um, by default, our number of workers is set to four. Let's set that to two and see if how slow that is. So 1.8 is slightly slower. That makes sense. Let's set it to one. It should come in at about the three second mark because um, so there we go. Um, um, let's set it to we try four already. Let's try five. Now, again, I know I have f eight cores, but you know, I'll keep going up. And so, yep. That, that didn't seem to be very different. And of course you gotta run multiple of these to see if it really makes a difference. So this didn't seem to make a difference. So five seemed to be where it's sort of topping out. This one seemed to be coming in on the second, but it's gonna vary based on what else your system is doing. So um, you can see this is back to like a second here. So it seemed to be right on the one second mark with all eight cores going. Hopefully this shed some light on the Go profiler, feel free to make changes, see if you can get it faster with the same data. Okay, take care, see you in the next video. Bye.